So good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can hear me clearly. So I am here to present our study, a joint study that uh, I, we worked on last year with uh, Maureen Rosellon and Jean uh, Carlos um, of PIDS, uh, well, back then PIDS. Essentially, I'm trying to answer this question. How does the Philippines fare in meeting the ASEAN Economic Community Vision 2025? The presentation will go as follows. Uh, an introduction of the study and what we want, want to answer, and then how did we go about uh, um, finding the, trying to answer our uh, question. And then um, there are a number of indicators in the AEC, um, uh, there are a number of AEC indicators, so we'll just present a summary and I, I will point to everyone, I'll point everyone to the discussion paper for um, more details or for if you're interested for uh, learning about the the performance of the philippines in all of the, the indicators and then we want to see how the philippines performance is aligned uh, in the aec is aligned with our goals is local goals domestic goals in as uh, identified in the philippine development plan and finally some conclusions and uh, recommendations so the ASEAN Economic Community is one of the three pillars of the ASEAN Community. The ASEAN Community was formally established, as uh, we've mentioned, as we've heard earlier, in November of 2015, during the 27th ASEAN Summit uh, held in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. In the same summit, the ASEAN leaders pledged their continuous commitment to achieve regional prosperity and peace and adopted the ASEAN Community Vision 2025. It's a 10-year community building strategy composed of blueprints for each pillar of the ASEAN community, namely the ASEAN economic community, the ASEAN social cultural community, and the ASEAN political security community. The slide shows that the 2025 vision for each pillar, the IEC in particular, envisions a community that is highly integrated regionally and globally, competitive and innovative, and more connected, resilient, and inclusive by 2025. Each pillar has a blueprint comprising of characteristics of the envisioned community, while each characteristic is comprised of elements or key result areas with strategies to achieve the community goals. For the AEC blueprint, which is, focus, which is the focus of this study, there are five character, characteristics reflecting the vision a highly integrated and cohesive economy, a competitive, innovative, and dynamic ASEAN, enhanced connectivity and sectoral cooperation, resilient, inclusive, and people-oriented and centered ASEAN, and a global ASEAN. So let me try to go through each quickly. A highly integrated and cohesive economy in this characteristic aims to facilitate the seamless movement of goods, services, investment, capital, and skilled labor within ASEAN in order to enhance ASEAN's trade and production networks, as well as to establish a more unified market for its firms and consumers. The second one, a competitive, innovative, and dynamic ASEAN, this characteristic focuses on elements that contribute to increasing the region's competitiveness and productivity, including strengthening overall regulatory practice and coherence at the regional level. The third characteristic seeks to enhance economic connectivity in various sectors, namely transport, telecommunication, and energy, and to further integrate and cooperate in key sectors that complement existing efforts toward creating an integrated and sustainable economic region with strengthened soft and hard networks. The fourth one, a resilient, inclusive, people-oriented, and people-centered ASEAN, aims to enhance equitable economic development in the region, such as through the development of MSMEs, increasing participation of the private sector in community building, and ensuring shared benefits of integration to all sectors of the society and economy and to all countries in the region. Finally, a global ASEAN seeks to further integrate the AEC into the global economy through trade agreements that strengthen the ASEAN's position as an open and inclusive economic region and promote complementarities and mutual benefits for the region. And each of these characteristics is comprised of elements or key result areas with strategies to achieve the community goals. 
So for this study, we wish to track the Philippines' progress in achieving the characteristics and key result areas outlined in the AEC Blueprint 2025. Specifically, we wanted to rank the Philippines' performance vis-a-vis -vis its neighbors, to examine the Philippines' performance based on alignment between the AEC vision and the Philippine Development Plan, and to identify areas for improvement and provide policy recommendations to address bottlenecks. The study supports the also uh, raising awareness of Filipinos on ASEAN, including the Philippines' contribution to the AEC community building. The research by Albert et al. in 2017, uh, also by PIDS, suggested the need to increase awareness and understanding of what ASEAN is among Filipinos. And the findings, can, the findings of this study can also influence the plan of action of policymakers as well as private sector in addressing gaps in socioeconomic planning and policy implementation. So what did we do? So for this study, we used the indicators identified in the ASEAN Community Progress Monitoring System or the ACPMS report in 2017, particularly the AEC indicators as this is the focus of the study. The ACPMS is one of the efforts made by ASEAN to keep track and assess the regional integration process, and it is aimed to provide statistics on ASEAN integration outcomes. There were three ACPMS reports released. The most recent one was in 2017. And all the ACPMS reports presented indicators to assess the progress made by ASEAN member states in community building. The ACPMS 2017 report identified for each of the five pillar characteristics, three core indicators and various supporting indicators. Core indicators were intended to track the most essential elements of the AEC and supporting indicators were included to discuss elements or key result areas that are not accounted for by the core indicators. In our study, we updated the indicators in the ACPMS 2017 reports database, which uh, we used for which we used a number of sources, ASEAN Secretariat's database and yearbooks, World Bank's uh, database like WITS, uh, IMF, UNCTAD, and various sources. And, but the difficulty with the, this is that uh, some data points have varying starting points, now some up to 2005, and then the end points are also um, different. So we will, um, the, the paper has discussed uh, those and presented those data. So some of them are 2019, some of them are uh, only available up to 2018, now, at the time that we're doing this study. So we also wanted to characterize the Philippine performance. So the study looked at the performance in terms of ranking vis-a-vis -vis ASEAN countries, and the indicators rankings were classified in top, middle, bottom, using the following criteria. So if the top, if you're uh, first to the third, middle, if you're fourth to the sixth, and bottom, if you're seventh to the tenth. The study also looks at the performance of the Philippines with respect to the AEC targets. So they are classified into on-track or off-track or static, using the following criteria. So on-track, if you're improving and your direction is towards the target or off track if you're if not um, moving towards the vision or the target or has no significant progress. So for example, increasing an intra-ASEAN exports and imports are on track as to the AEC goal of seamless flow of goods in the region, while a decline in the global competitive index score deviates from the AEC goals of strengthening competitiveness. So that would put you off track. Because the Philippine commitment to the ASEAN community is also expected to result in domestic improvements, this study highlights the Philippine context in relation to the goals outlined in the Philippine Development Plan 2017 to 2022. The study also looked at selected indicators of the Philippine Development Plan that are aligned with the AEC characteristics. So our source for the data on indicators is the statistical indicators on Philippine development of StatDev which is an instrument formulated and maintained by the PSA as a means by which economic progress and social change can be monitored and measured more effectively. So what did we find? So the next few slides actually present the AEC characteristic, the AEC indicators based on the ACPMS reports, as well as the Philippine Development Plan and their indicators that are related to the AEC characteristics and elements. So for instance, we, we tried we did the mapping and we found that in characteristic one, a highly integrated and cohesive economy, the AEC indicators include value and proportion of intra-ASEAN trade in goods and services, 
tariff on intra-ASEAN imports, financial and FDI related indicators, etc. The characteristics aligned to the Philippine Development Plan pillars, namely inequality reducing transformation and enabling and supportive economic environment. Shown here as well are the Philippine Development Plan chapters and the Philippine Development Plan indicators, which suggest comparability to the AEC indicators. For instance, expanding economic opportunities in the agriculture, fisheries, and forestry, and in industry and services, and indicators related to exports, investments, and GVC participation. So in the interest of time, the, the, I will not talk about each and every indicator and our performance there, but I point you to the discussion paper later for further details. So second, the competitive, innovative, and dynamic ASEAN, AEC indicators include labor productivity, R&D expenditures as percentage of GDP, global competitive index, and supporting indicators on trademark and patent, time required to start a business, and control of corruption index. The related PDP pillars are enhancing the social fabric, particularly the objective of ensuring a people-centered, clean and efficient governance and other related pillar is the inequality reducing transformation. There are several related PDP indicators as listed in this table. Um, and some of which are the same, actually the same as the AEC indicators, such as the control of corruption, the global competitive index, R&D expenditures as percent of GDP, and others. On characteristic three, enhanced com connectivity and sectoral cooperation, AEC indicators include those related to intra and extra ASEAN tourist arrivals, fixed broadband and mobile network coverage, logistics indices, and indicators for other sectors such as energy, minerals, and e-commerce. The related PDP pillar is increasing growth potential and the specific goal of infrastructure development. PDP indicators include those related to air, passenger, and cargo traffic, the number of international flights, the number of water transport passengers, and others. On characteristic four, resilient, inclusive, and people-oriented and people-centered ASEAN, AEC indicators include the MSME, uh, density, labor force participation rate, uh, private partnership investments, domestic credit to the private sector. And it is noted here that there are indicators that reflect, refer to the ASEAN collectively, such as the ratio between the average GDP per capita in ASEAN per CLMV and the ASEAN 6 uh, CLMV gap in the intra-ASEAN trade and inward FDI. So the Philippine performance could not be specifically determined for these types of indicators. But there are still some PDP pillars that are related, and this would include enabling and supportive economic environment and inequality redu reducing transformation, particularly the goals of expanding economic opportunities in industry and services and accelerating human capital development, which is chapter 10 of our PDP. PDP indicators include number of MSMEs participating in the global value chains and the percentage of youth not in education, employment, and training, or the NDET. Finally, the global ASEAN. AEC indicators include tariff rates on extra ASEAN imports and imports from ASEAN FTA partners, extra ASEAN trade and FDI flows from ASEAN to the rest of the world and from the rest of the world to ASEAN. Philippine Development Plan pillars related to this, to this characteristic include the foundations for sustainable development and enabling and supportive economic environment. Specific strategies, including promoting greater amity and cooperation with all nations, and expanding and enhancing diplomatic engagements and cooperation in regional and international fora, and enhancing technical cooperation and economic cooperation through participating in bilateral, regional, and global integration. There are no direct indicators in the StatDev, the PSA indicator database, but indirect indicators are merchandise and services exports. It is noted that there are, while there are several indicators used in the study, the indicators do not exhaustively and exactly represent the AEC characteristics as there are more AEC key result areas or elements that the ind indicators identified. And availability of data is also part of the consideration. 
However, the use of the indicators is deemed a relevant approach as it provides a method that contributes to the review and analysis of the progress made in the AEC blueprint. There could be other methods to supplement such analysis, for instance, analysis of the official documents and policies and regulations, but these are not covered in this study and hence recommended for further research. So now let's just uh, look at a, uh, a condensed summary of uh, the Philippine performance for each of the characteristics. Characteristic one aims to eliminate barriers to the movement of goods, services, capital, and labor within ASEAN in pursuit of a more unified market for the region. And for most of the indicators, the Philippines overall ranked around the lower middle, or the highest is actually in the fourth. So we're actually around fourth. Um, uh, in the, the middle group vis-a-vis uh, so -vis other ASEAN countries. But as far as uh, achieving the targets of the AEC Vision 2025, the country is experiencing upward trends, particularly in the areas of trade in goods and services, participation in global value chains, and financial inclusion. Some of the indicators where rank is high, where we are actually in the first to the third, include intra-ASEAN imports and services sector share in GDP. While indicators were in ranking of the Philippines is low, we belong to the 7th to 10th, include intra-ASEAN exports, intra-ASEAN FDI flows by source country, and accounts in a financial institution. As for characteristic 2, little progress is seen in indicators such as R&D expenditure as percent of GDP researchers per million people, the control of corruption. But the ranking of the Philippines compared to other ASEAN is almost mostly in the middle. There are no high ranking indicators for the country in characteristic two, and bottom ranking was seen in R&D expenditure as percent of GDP and time required to start a business. Characteristic three aims for the integrated and sustainable key sectors through enhanced connectivity and strengthened hard and soft networks. Improvements were seen in indicators related to tourist arrivals, fixed broadband subscriptions, population covered by 3G, liner shipping connectivity index, and off-track or no progress in logistics performance index and 4G coverage in recent years. In terms of ranking, the country was in the middle or middle or the bottom middle on most key result areas under this characteristic. Indicators where in ranking of the Philippines is high include water transport passengers, percentage of renewable energy in primary energy supply, and indicators where in ranking of the Philippines is low include intra-ASEAN tourist arrivals, percent of 3G coverage, and others. Meanwhile, Characteristic 4 aims for development and increased participation of MSMEs in economic activities, increased participation of the private sector in community building, and narrowing of the development gap between less developed and developing economies or developed economies in the region, among others. The country showed improvement in indicators on private partner investments in infrastructure in sectors such as energy, transport, sanitation, but not in ICT, and sluggish performance in MSME density and youth labor force participation rate. In characteristic four, the country is mostly at the top or middle ranking vis-a-vis -vis other ASEAN countries. High rank was seen in the private partnership investments in transport and water and sanitation infrastructure, and low rank in MSME density and youth labor participation. Finally, uh, a global ASEAN. Aims, the, the characteristic aims for a globally integrated and open economic community strengthened through trade agreements. On one hand, the Philippines is increasing openness to the world through trade as barriers in the form of tariff rates are gradually being brought down in FTAs, and MFN rates being one of the lowest in ASEAN. There is also increasing FDI from the rest of the world. However, there, is, there was observed decreasing FDI flows to the rest of the world. The Philippine ranks one of the top in the reduced tariff rates on imports with FDA partners and with the rest of the world. But the country ranks one of the lowest in terms of the ratio of trade with the rest of the world to GDP. 
Okay, so this is that slide. So this table shows that the summary of the Philippines' performance in the indicators for each of the AEC characteristics based on the rankings vis-a-vis -vis the ASEAN countries. So the top, again, uh, to reiterate, top means ranking from first to third, middle if you're fourth to sixth, and bottom if you're seventh to tenth. And uh, again, these are assumptive rankings uh, based on the most recent year or data available when we collected the data last year. The data indicate that considering all indicators used in the study, the Philippines performed at the middle level compared to other ASEAN countries, specifically in 29 out of the 60 indicators. So um, most of us, most of our indicators are in the, the 29 uh, rank. So we're in the middle. In this slide, we show the performance in relation to the AEC vision or targets. With on track, as again, um, on track, we mean that performance in the indicators is improving and directed towards the AEC vision or target, and off track if not moving towards the vision or target or has no progress. And data indicates that the Philippines is on track in 37 out of the 60 indicators. So, um, to being relatively bad. So just to summarize, the Philippines um, can leverage the AEC to pursue the goals outlined in the Philippine Development Plan. As you can see, there's really a very uh, coherent mapping between the AEC and the PDP. As the PDP 2017 to 2022 and AEC have overlapping goals. We looked at the alignment in both blueprints and find similar trends in PDP accomplishments and performance in the AEC characteristics. The Philippine Development Plan goals related to the AEC characteristic one indicate generally like high likelihood of achieving targets, particularly in terms of trade and local and foreign investments. For those related to characteristic two, there's generally low likelihood of achieving targets, except in indicators related to SDI utilization, like Filipino patents, utility models, industry designs, which indicate moderate to high likelihood. Meanwhile, performance related to connectivity and sectoral cooperation indicate transport related infrastructure show moderate to highly high likelihood of achieving the Philippine Development Plan target and the PDP goals related to resilience and inclusiveness indicate on average moderate likelihood of achieving targets. We, we don't include characteristic five here because there are no uh, direct indicators. So given this, the Philippines is generally moving towards the AEC goals, but it is showing moderate performance in comparison with ASEAN countries, as well as in accomplishing uh, what we have set forth in the Philippine Development Plan goals. With aspirations of becoming an upper middle income country, more improvements would be needed to step up the progress being made. A number of domestic policies have been crafted that directly support the achievement of the AEC goals. There is a need to evaluate some of the policies to see how these could be strengthened to support our AEC commitments in addition to our national goals. Increasing trade is an indication of an open and globally integrated economy, but data indicate that the volume of trade can be improved. Our national industrial strategy, IQS, would need to keep supporting and pushing the industries to innovate and produce competently and, competently and sustainably. The data also indicate that the performance in connectivity is weak. There are national projects to improve connectivity infrastructure, but one area that also deserves priority is ICT. The Philippines is observed to have relatively high cost, but low speed and weak internet connection, and to still have areas that are offline. The COVID-19 pandemic highlighted the importance of internet connectivity and digitalization in addressing consequences of mobility restrictions. But overall, internet and digital connectivity promotes better public service delivery and industry competitiveness and growth. There would also be a need for, a more, for more participation to achieve goals of a more inclusive society and economy. In particular, encouraging startups and entrepreneurship, financial participation to the unserved and underserved, and job opportunities for the youth. The experience from the pandemic has shown that a number of the youth are innovative and enterprising. The country can capitalize on these characteristics to maximize the gains 
from the demographic dividend. Providing opportunities to do business online is a good opportunity. It's a good support program for the youth. Moreover, the country must aim for attracting more investments, especially in technology. Aside from the traditional sources, the country can also look to ASEAN as a source of investment and thus become more integrated with the region. An enabling environment for business, both domestic and foreign investments, is in the agenda of the government. An example would, is the enactment of the ease of doing business law. However, effective implementation at the grassroots level may need strengthening, and data indicate that the Philippines has one of the longest uh, periods required to open a business. In view of the pandemic, the ASEAN developed frameworks to support recovery in the region. Aside from these initiatives, updating of the targets and other strategies in AEC Vision 2025 may need to be need may be needed as expected outcomes may not be delivered in the originally planned timeline. And ASEAN member states would have redirected or reprioritized their respective national plans. For instance, the Philippine Development Plan was updated to focus on a healthy and more resilient Philippines as an immediate objective. Moreover, adding a mechanism that would prompt the ASEAN Secretariat and the ASEAN member states to review the relevant ASEAN goals and strategies during regional and global crises would also be recommended in case of high impact crisis and critical events should happen again in the future. On the domestic front, there's also a need to reevaluate re the Philippine plans and indicators to capture the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, which I think NETA is already doing. NEDA is actively assessing the indicators of the Philippine Development Plan, and there's also a need for the entire government, including the local governments, to update their plans and incorporate some of the AEC targets. So let me now uh, mention that this is actually the, the discussion paper from which all of the, the discussion is coming from, and the, the indicators are also presented here in greater detail. So I um, recommend uh, this to everyone who would be interested. Uh, thank you very much, and um, I welcome your questions later in the open forum.